Hi, I'm Danielle from CaptivatingCostumes.com. In this episode, we're going to be discussing the Faraday cage, the revolving heatsink, the toolbox, and my next project. Stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. I hope you had a lovely Christmas and a fantastic new year. Let's jump straight back into it. You can see I've got the fruit bowl here. This is Kat's fruit bowl because I've already cut the bottom off mine for the heat sink. And today came these picnic covers from Amazon. Now I was a little bit gutted because I ordered 30 centimeters, but they sent me 35, which at first looked like it was going to be too big to become a Faraday cage. But after a little bit of playing around, I've managed to get it uh, to fit properly. So what I basically did was cut the top off uh, around the center here, which looked like this. And as I did in a previous video, I cut the top off this as well. And I basically just attached them together and folded the edges under. So here we have the Faraday cage and it's a bit rough around the edges, but I'll fix those up at some point. And I also need to cut off the um, the cable ties in here. So this clips straight onto the proton pack. So I'm gonna go and do that now and then I'll be back. As you can see that's now on the proton pack and it's looking pretty cool. It's a massive mess down there, but whatever. So like I said, I need to straighten these edges out because that looks a bit dodgy. Now, why have I cut a hole in the middle of this? And the reason for that is for the heat sink. And what I want to do is have the heat sink in the middle like this and when the proton pack starts up I want it to turn on a servo so it'll turn one way turn back and then probably won't do anything else from that point on I just think it'll be a nice feature for when the proton pack starts up the next thing we've got if you have a look down in this area it's an absolute mess I will start attaching things and tidying them up soon but for now I am printing the toolbox lid now this thing needs to be printed in two halves the left and the right half and it's a 17 hour print for each side so let's just go and have a quick look at the printer it's been on for four hours so far and here we are over at the printer and I can see already that that's going to be a really nice print so I'm really happy with that it's only 9% in after four hours so it's not going to finish until tomorrow afternoon probably but on that note I also have a new extruder on my printer I brought myself a new hot end not extruder sorry and this is the micro swiss hot end which is a full metal hot end as opposed to PTFE which my previous one was so I'm now able to print at higher temperatures which means I can use some more interesting filaments so there's part one of the lid complete with my new hot end and the print on this is amazing look how smooth that is and the top is like glass so I just need to put rivets through each of those holes now um, and yeah then it'll start to look like the lid of the toolbox on the proton pack the other half is currently printed and it printing and is due to finish in a couple of hours I started it this morning so I'll give you a good idea of how it's going to look. I also need to print the handle for this area. I'll probably attach it by magnets. Here's the other part printed. Um, hasn't really come out as good as the other one, but it's still really nice, so I'm happy with that. So that's the toolbox completed. And there it is in one piece. Luckily, Martin, who built it, left little um, pipes coming out of the end so you can just clip them together. So the only problem that we do have now is this has got a split down the middle. So what I might do is put a sheet of ABS plastic over the top of it or styrene or something in black and then drill holes through it and probably one across the bottom as well to cover that split maybe one in the middle and I've also got to print the handle of course and then for the back part I think I'm going to put some black tube, uh, black tube over the top of this just to make it a little bit bigger so let's have a look at it on the proton pack so there it is on the proton pack and as you can see it looks really good. I did actually change the size a bit too much and it looks too small down the sides there. Slimer seems happy with it though. And there's a gap in the top which I'll fill in with some owl shaped plastic. So, but overall it looks really good and it's getting, an, it's starting to have a really nice effect now. And it hides all those minging wires. Now, for, as I said, the, I want the heat sink to turn 
on the uh, Faraday cage. So I already had these really beasty servos. Uh, I can't remember what make they are now. Tower Pro, I think. But they are metal geared awesome things. The only problem is it was too big. So sitting on top of the speaker would make the heat sink sit too high on the proton pack. So I had to buy some new servos. And here is the server that I bought. This is a high-tech servo. I think it was about £14 off eBay. Um, it's also Metal Gear. So that should uh, do exactly what I need it to do. And it's small enough to fit into the Faraday cage without the heatsink sitting too high. Basically what I will do is turn the heatsink over and just probably glue it on there. So I'll just need to wire that up, which will probably be done by next week. As far as the rotating heatsink is concerned, the final thing that I need to do is print a bracket that attaches here and here and goes up over the speaker. I can then mount the servo into the middle um, without attaching it to the speaker and then mount the heatsink on top of that. But I need to print this bracket first, which will probably be do done next week because I've been simultaneously doing another project which I'd like to discuss now. As I mentioned previously, I'm getting towards the end of my proton pack build now. The rest of it's gonna be coding and then I've gotta move on to building Kat's proton pack. And I wanted to show you the project that I intend on doing next. Now, I got started in cosplay when I made an Iron Man suit um, about five years ago. And I was really keen to make an Iron Woman version of the suit. And during my uh, travels around the internet, I came across this awesome concept art by a guy called Bogdan on DeviantArt. And he calls this model the SRT1 Barracuda. And as you can see, it's a really nice feminine design. Uh, the faceplate is good, but it still keeps the um, Iron Man aesthetics. If we have a look at another concept piece of art, uh, I don't know how long it'll take to load, you get a really good look at it of what it's like with the faceplate up um, and all the different details on it. This was going around the internet for quite a while when a guy with the screen name Smook CMB decided to design the model um, and make the 3D models of it for Peppercura for people to print out onto paper, fold up and make into fiberglass costumes. And a few people did that, a few people made foam versions. So I contacted Smook, uh, also known as Addison on Facebook, and I asked him if he could convert the files into 3D printing for 3D printing for me. So after a little while, he, uh, he tweaked the files and he came up with some really good files. So I've uh, imported the faceplate here over into my Cura, and I just about managed to get it to fit on the print bed by laying it at this exact angle. And I can see that this is going to be a 37 hour print using 125 meters of filament. So if this one fails, I am literally going to have a nervous breakdown. So let's head back over to the drawing. In fact, I've got it up on my desktop here with a much better picture. And I'll discuss with you the kind of designs that I want. Now, as you know, I quite enjoy putting electronics into things. So I've been looking at this and deciding what electronics I would like to submit into it. So the first thing is obvious. I'd like to have servos up in the faceplate. So whenever you press a button, perhaps in the hip or maybe a remote control or something, the faceplate will go up and down, possibly with some sound effects in. I was also considering having the ears rotating uh, when you take the helmet on and off. Uh, the back, the flight stabilizers on the back here, although they don't really appear to have any movement in the concept art, I would like them to flap up and down. So as if to um, do the flight stabilizer movement that you've seen in Iron Man. The next thing would obviously be the arc reactor, which I would just use NeoPixels for again. Uh, we also have the, um, what are they called? The blasters in the hands. Perhaps someone can come up with the name for those. And perhaps some movement down the legs. Maybe I could make the hip pods rotate. And whilst I'm building it, I'll probably go into some other ideas and uh, try and squeeze some more electronics in there. But the main thing is I want movement, sounds, and lights. And then the final thing that I was considering putting in is when the flight stabilizers come up, perhaps have some kind of jet stream or smoke screen stream firing out. So that's my plan for this project once the, um, once the proton packs are finished.
I did actually already start building this barracuda about a year ago and way, the way I did it was I took some blue plastic buckets and cut them up into the Pepecura template shapes and then just riveted them together because this particular type of plastic which I think is HDPE or something high density polyethylene you can't glue it, you can't paint it, you can't really do anything to it except rivet it so now I have a 3D printer I can do these things uh, slightly better. It's actually really dusty because it's just been sat there forever pretty much and also because this is open I can't glue it shut or anything so I might 3D print the breast part and just attach it over the top and perhaps rivet it from the back and I can also put some extra details on this but I can use this part that I've already built as a foundation. This helmet that I made in foam actually came out massive and I had to cut it down and ended up ruining it so it's just a nice placeholder whilst I have this thing on display in the living room. I have printed some parts so far so let's go over and check those out now. The back of the Barracuda helmet finished printing and the print came out absolutely amazingly. Have a look at the shine on that. It is almost a perfect print and that was done on relatively low settings on a cheap printer. The One Hell Duplicator i3 version 2, although I have got the Micro Swiss hot end on it. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. And here is the Barracuda's jaw printing. I can see that that's got quite a nice finish on it as well. You can see some of the layer lines and there's a few marks in it, but I really don't mind that. So the support is fantastic. Um, she's at 79% now. So let's just leave her to finish. The jaw finished as well and the print came out just as good as the back part. There's a few little bumps and stuff around that area but nothing I'm too fussed about. I think it just adds to the aesthetics of the design. Problem I did have though is these corners up here printed quite badly and they snapped off actually on both sides. Luckily I managed to find one of them which I'll probably glue on another time. But the other side, uh, that's lost forever. I think it attached to some clothes or something that might have been lying around. So but I'll see how if I can get away with that as it is for now. So currently I've got the back of the helmet printing, another part. And I have about seven parts of the main helmet to print before it goes on to doing that really long faceplate print. Now the final thing I've got to talk about in this episode is my Holtzman armband version 2 that I'm going to start prototyping now. The first Holtzman armband used an Arduino Uno which is fairly slow but it, it did what we needed it to do. Played the few animations of the trap opening and closing but it was no good for quite fast animations that required 6 frames per second and above. So the kind of animations that you see on the Proton Pack were never possible on the armband. So I've decided to start working on a version 2 armband which uses this microprocessor which is called a Teensy and I believe this is a Teensy 3.1 or something like that. I'll flash it up on the screen anyway. And this tiny little thing here is considerably more powerful than that. And this will play proper animations and will make the Holtzman armbands just a slight bit more interesting. So that's all I have for today's episode. Um, I will be working on the Barracuda Iron Girl costume and the Proton Pack and of course the Holtzman armband version 2 over the coming months. I aim to have the Proton Pack and the Barracuda finished by May ready for MCM Comic Con in London. So if you've enjoyed watching my video and you'd like to see updates on the projects that we've discussed today, please don't forget to subscribe, like the video and comment because I want to chat. Until next time, see you soon. Love you all.